Hello, and welcome to Don't Die Before You're Dead. I am your host, Mary McCartney, and this is where we talk about all things related to living the life that you are meant to live. Today is an interesting day for me because June 7th was my anticipated departure date for heading down east, the final leg of my cross Canada tour, if you will. However, a couple of weeks ago, I was met with what I would refer to as perhaps a dangerous detour. Wow, doesn't that sound exciting? And of course, as you know, I said today was going to be the day. So my detour began actually earlier than a couple of weeks ago. So during the early part of May, I did some traveling. I didn't really load Betty up, but I got her road worthy and ready to hit the road and just, you know, field test how she was handling before the long trip out east. And I decided to go up north and visit some friends of mine up in the North Bay area, I was up there for a time. Also ended up going to King Carden to visit some friends of mine there too. And things went very, very well, except I had a couple of situations that were puzzling me and they refer to my health. One evening, I ended up with the uh, privilege of speaking to a Toastmasters group in Barrie. Hadn't been to Toastmasters for, oh, probably close to 10 years. I was really looking forward to going. A friend had invited me to come and to speak, something that I've been doing quite a bit with regards to my don't die before you're dead, as well you know. When I got to the meeting place for Toastmasters and entered the building, I really started feeling very uncomfortable. There was a pain right in the, the center of my chest and it felt like a basketball was being blown up in my throat, almost choking me. And it was, it was not a sore throat, it was painful from this pressure. My friend thought perhaps maybe I was a little bit anxious and, and having a bit of an anxiety attack. And I thought, well, that, that's really kind of strange. I'm not prone to that. And uh, I replied, no, I didn't think so. And she said, are you okay? And I went, no, I'm in a lot of pain. Anyway, my friend got up and introduced me to come and speak. And before I knew it, the pain had gone and I was up there sharing my message of don't die before you're dead really enjoyed the meeting, stayed there, I was fine. Well, two or three times after that, I had similar episodes of feeling that my throat was being uh, clogged. Uh, well, it was, um, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like this basketball pressure. And, you know, for a time, you kind of ignore that. And I thought maybe indigestion, not having really much experience with indigestion and not feeling any other symptoms. Um, so in there, they were short lived. Anyway, as it turns out, once I got back from touring around on the long weekend, I presented myself to the hospital with a major event the night before, feeling much the same way and extreme pain. And they kept me with the understanding that, oh, well, we'll do a, what they call an angiogram, where they would do this dye thing through your heart and check things out. And if need be, if there was a little bit of a problem, they would put in this stents while they were at it and, you know, open up, you know, the vessels if need be. And that was fine. It was a little bit um, frightening, to say the least, but I was glad I was in the right place. And uh, what they were saying to me was, uh, you know, perhaps a lot of it came from my history. And, you know, some of you would know that I'm adopted, so I'm not familiar with a lot of my history. So on the Monday of the long weekend, I had this angiogram done. They wheeled me in. Wonderful, wonderful treatment at the hospital, at my local Oakville hospital. It was just terrific. They ended up sending me to Trillium Health Center fantastic people, immediate care. I was just not anxious because of the care I was getting. Anyway, when all came, all was said and done, when the angiogram was done, it turned out that I had major artery blockage. Three of my arteries were blocked at 95% and one at 90%. And I remember laying there, looking at the pictures and saying to the, the attendants there, the surgeons that, 
I was shocked, totally, completely shocked. I said, how is this possible? Two months ago, I'm walking all over Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Thank God nothing happened there that I was actually back in Canada, but I could not believe what I was seeing. And the proof was right there. I mean, there was no denying that I had serious heart issues. And of course, my immediate reaction is me? Like, do you know who I am? I'm, I'm, I'm so active. I get out there. I tell everybody to keep moving. When all was said and done, they sent me through urgent um, quadruple bypass surgery. And um, same day, right away, no, no second guessing what was going to happen. And they did, the surgeon, the cardiac surgeon said, actually, if I hadn't been as active as I was, I probably wouldn't have made it. When he was finished and he called my family to tell them that I was out of surgery and things had gone well, he did tell them I was lucky to be alive. And not a day has gone by since that I haven't felt that way. And my recovery has been quite good. Um, the, the nurses, the doctors have all said that I progress very well. And again, attributing it to the fact that I am pretty much an active person. The recovery stage right now that I'm having difficulty with is the fact that I am a, a, an active person and, and just waiting patiently to recover is um, difficult for me. But again, so thankful that I have this opportunity to share with you what has happened uh, and the fact that it's all about attitude in a lot of ways too. I had maybe minimal uh, control over my, my, um, my diagnosis, my actual health condition, some of it genetics and and my family predisposition and what have you. Now, let's let's be fair. Let's be honest. I mean, all of you know that I don't have the best eating habits in the whole world. And so that probably didn't contribute. And I have to fess up that, um, you know, ice cream really isn't a food group. But uh, thankful enough to be able to say, OK, I need to adjust some things. But being able to adjust is a privilege. And I am so thankful that I can take this detour. As dangerous as it was to be able to say, it's not the end of my traveling. It's not the end of my living fully. It's not, it's not something that has scared me to the point that I'm just going to stay at home and hibernate because I'm too afraid to do anything. Because, you know, not to be foolish and not to be reckless, but having a new lease on life, having this bypass surgery, has allowed me to really have a fresher, um, fresher parts in my heart. You know, they took a vein out of my arm and, you know, I mean, I'm sure I have this major scar down one side of my arm, but so what? I actually had a volunteer come and visit me, a wonderful man by the name of David, who came to talk to me as a past um, heart surgery recipient and a recovering quite nicely from his surgery and share with me how his progress was, how he recovered through those times. Now, um, now he does whatever he normally would do prior to the surgery, as will I in time. So what does it mean for me right now? Well, the hardest thing for me right now means I can't drive for six weeks. Can you figure that? Me, I can't drive for six weeks. And you know, it. so what? big deal. Um, this too will come to pass. You know how fast six weeks goes? In the blink of an eye. And one of the things I need to do is I need to sit in the back seat, be chauffeured by my family, by my family and friends because of airbags. It's not safe for me to be sitting in the front because of potential damage that would happen to my heart had I got into an accident or somebody hit us or something. One of the things that, that really I struggled with in the hospital uh, was that I got this terrible knot in my hair. I know, it just, it was driving me crazy and I couldn't lift my hands over my head to try and part the, the hairs and separate it and clean out what was bothering me. I, I had a shower, it didn't come out. I don't know whether it just knotted up automatically or whether something got spilled in it, but it drove me crazy. And I'm thinking, 
of all the things to be concerned about, I've got this stupid thing in my hair. But you know what? As far as facing what's coming next, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I can't drive for this, these six weeks. So what's it going to be timeline for me to head down east? Is it possible that I just postpone it? Because I don't want to rush it. I don't want to jump in the car and go because I said I was going to go and then try to change myself, not have the opportunity to explore and see all those wonderful things I wanted to see. So maybe when I get around to driving a little bit later in the summer, I just do some of the more local areas that I've missed in the last couple of years. Not sure. I know it's a detour. It certainly is not a, um, a dead end. It's not a, you know, pack everything up, sell the vehicle, can't do it, I'm done. I just find it a little ironic that, well, I'm kind of prohibited, if you will, from, from heading out too soon. It's not really a good time for me to go. All those wildfires that are happening, the evacuations and everything else, the air quality, not a good time perhaps so the timing itself might be you know an indicator that better times later anyway i just wanted to share with you that i did have this setback it is a setback a detour the um the label on there the the logo on my van on my book says life is not your average road trip and isn't that the truth Things we least expect come up and we need to adjust accordingly. Not always, not always easy to do, that's for sure. Some things are not fixable. Some things don't have perhaps the best work around. But the thing is we, we need to look at what we can control and what we can't. I am so thankful that I'm home I'm in my own province, I'm in my own hometown when all of this came about. Just, just a few months ago, I was in Mexico. What if? I was parasailing. For goodness sakes, what would have happened had this been if I'd been up in the air? It didn't. And there's no point dwelling on it. And there's no point not doing anything further for fear that it's not going to be safe. Don't die before you're dead is as real to me as it was before. Live fully every day. We don't know what's going to happen. I may have lost my life through that episode a couple of weeks ago. The doctor said I was very lucky. I had done a lot of things up until that point. I did not wait until later for anything. I would not have died leaving things undone that I wanted to do. So I still plan to live that way accordingly. And yes, I will take the necessary three or four months uh, required to regain my energy. That's that's an area that I'm I'm struggling with. I'm not used to having such low energy. But according to the stats about, you know, heart surgery, it is quite normal that it's going to take me time. I, I'm not meant to be out bounding out down the street and out the road. Another thing, the, speaking of being on the road, another thing I am exceedingly thankful for is that nothing happened to me while I was driving that would have caused serious consequences to somebody else. I feel so blessed in the sense that all of this came about in a way that would that was so much better than it could have been. I've always kind of had a bit of a philosophy that things could always be worse. So gratitude is a, a major part of my, my feelings these days. Um, I could be sad that I'm not jumping in the car and going down east, but the gratitude for being alive just overtakes that, just overwhelms the whole thing. And I've been fortunate enough to be asked to speak in a couple of speaking engagements come the fall. I'm really looking forward to that. If any of you um, 
have some a group that you would like me to come and speak to, uh, please get in touch with me. I'd be happy to come, share my message of uh, don't die before you're dead. Uh, do what you can, while you can, for as long as you can. At first I thought, wow, I've got this serious problem and I have to have a heart surgery and I've been going around telling everybody to get out of the house and do things. And at first I questioned myself and then I realized, you know what? It's still the right thing to do. Still get out there and do what you can while you can for as long as you can because it was that physical activity that trumped the um, the genetics and the history in my family of having a heart problem. So I still say the same thing. Can I get out and do what I can right now? Absolutely. What does that mean? Well, not walking very far, that's for sure. Not doing a lot of stairs. But that's only now, that's only today, and every day it's better. So without further ado, I would just like to say thank you so much to the healthcare providers that gave me this whole new opportunity to go forth and enjoy my days. Thank you to my family who uh, were right there in a, in a moment's notice, they were there when I, I kind of came to and they're standing at my, at my bedside. Three of my four sons you know, came immediately in there. And my fourth son who is living in Guatemala right now with his family, um, FaceTiming me, video chatting me, checking to make sure that I'm, I'm doing well and knowing the love of family is so, so important. And of course, my friends. Where would I be without my friends? Friends who have been in touch with me, friends who are praying for me, friends who have reached out, friends who have come and picked me up and chauffeured me out for breakfast already. Um, I love all of you. And thank you to you who have joined this group who are following along with me. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next few weeks in posting and whatnot, but I will be doing some traveling before the summer's through and I hope you'll join with me. And I hope you'll share perhaps some of your experiences because one of the things that struck me the most about all of this, something I never heard, and maybe you did, maybe you knew this and I did not, but that, that whole feeling of this, this basketball blowing up in my throat. I had never, ever heard of anything like that before and really hadn't acquainted it with a heart problem. I watched the commercials. I've seen about the vomiting, the sweating, the pain down your arm. And I know women are different than men in their symptoms, but I've never heard about that throat swelling thing going on. So. If that's something that I can share with other people and, and it helps, then, then great. But thank you to you for, for coming along and being my encourager and, and sharing your, uh, your fun times with me as well. I look forward to hearing more about where you think I should go and what I should be doing, but there will be a detour. So in the meantime, Thank you so much. I look forward to, to speaking with all of you. And if you've got a group you want me to come and see, uh, and chat with, and maybe, you know, don't forget my books, Don't Die Before You're Dead, or The Road Trip, and others available on Amazon. Just look up my name. And uh, I look forward to uh, all the years to come. So take care and talk to you next time. Bye-bye.